Praise Yeshua. Hope all of you are doing good. Uh, let's begin with a small prayer. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I pray that let your name be glorified today. My life is a gift from you. There is nothing that I can boast on. There is nothing that I can claim that is my own. But everything that I have is a gift from you. And this day, I just want to bring my gift back to you. And I pray that let it bring glory to your name. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today as I stand here, I'm not standing here to, uh, you know, teach you on a particular subject or uh, to, you know, do a preaching. But today I would like to tell you my own story from the depth of my heart. And why am I doing this? The main reason is that over the last few weeks, I guess uh, I got this questions from question from many people with whom I have worked, with whom I have, you know, maybe traveled. So the, the different people who have always seen me as a different person, as a profession, uh, uh, I am a learning consultant by profession. And uh, people have only seen that side of me or maybe uh, as a friend or as uh, something else but they have, many of them have not seen this side of me where I am talking about Yeshua and you know I have given my life to him so they came back asking why this decision in your life what made you turn to this like you were into a profession that was good you were earning well and there are so many benefits to it but why turning to this so I would like to say the first and uh, first and foremost what I would like to say is that it has always been my heart's desire to share my life with anybody who thinks that it is of no use or you know those who have lost hope in their life those who feel that you know uh, there is nothing that they can look forward to because that is where I was and where I stand today if I can say the only one reason why I stand here is Him alone. I never went in search of Yeshua. But it was He who came to my life. And today, I want to answer everybody who has asked me that question. A few of my friends, they think, and my friends, my colleagues, they think that I chose this way because I have hardships in my life. Or maybe still I am in this field because it is very glamorous. Or when people look at you, you are on the social media and you're doing things. So for the glamour or for the riches or for all the things that the world sees. But I have only one thing to say that I was lost. I was completely lost. And if not for Yeshua, I will not even breathe. If I stand here today, it is only His mercy. It is only His grace. Even, the, even every breath that I take many, many times in my life, it would have been just an end. But if I stand today, if I breathe today, if I talk today, if I walk today, it is only Him. It is only Yeshua. And that is what I want to share with you today. Why I became a Christian. What made me follow Yeshua. I know I'm not perfect. You know, I am just a human being with a lot of loss. But the only good decision that I have made in my life is to follow Christ. All of you know me by the name Raji Shiju. But my maiden name is Raji Gopinath. Yes, that's my name, Raji Gopinath. So when people hear, you know, if before getting married, when people would hear me say, Raji Gopinath, and then I talk about Yeshua. They're like, what? Why did you do that? What made you do that? Did somebody come and tell you to become a Christian? Did somebody come and bribe you into it? Did someone, you know, uh, showed you great things? Did someone promise to marry you if you become a Christian? So many questions to which I want to give an answer today. My life is but a gift from Him. That is how I see it. I always used to pray 
even when i was not very aware of what's happening in my life i used to say father in heaven would you make my life a love song to you and i see that each and every day in and out his love for me is the song that i sing his love for me is the breath that i have and why would not i share this when this is the only purpose of my life this is the only truth of my life so to take you into my story i would like to begin with the kind of background some of you might be aware of it but for those who have not heard i would definitely want to share this with you born and brought up in a hindu nayar family my father was a government servant my mother was a housewife and as a child i have i have two siblings uh, both of them are in trivandrum and my siblings my mother they have also come to this faith but why why this entire family turned to this faith that is i that is what i want to tell you it was not some a, a human being that pulled us into it but when you hear me you would know that it is his hand himself that led me into it so you know i was born up uh, born and brought up to uh, mr e n g nair and ramaji nair my proud parents the reason why i am in this world but when i say my proud parents the biggest gift that have come to my life uh, because they you know i was born in that family is yeshua because my childhood was not a very great childhood um i think when i say this uh, all those people who are listening to me or hearing me there are many of you who who would have had difficult childhoods and some of you uh, are still paying a price for what happened to you as a child so i was born and brought up in this family my father was earning well uh in fact one of uh, out of all his brothers and sisters one of the most blessed uh, lives we were leading so we had money we had everything that we could have but no peace of mind the first memory that i have as a child is my mother being hit by my father on her head and blood is just oozing out of her head and as a 4 or 4 year old i'm sitting there and crying and asking you know shouting for help somebody come and save my mother i remember her trying to hang herself on the fan the same day that was the kind of chaos that we i was in and as that 4 year old i sat there writing a letter i don't even know how to write a b c d but i know that if you write a letter it goes to people it goes to people and they you get to convey what you want to and i was trying to convey that i need help my mother needs help that is the first memory of my mind uh, uh, the the thing that i have in my mind but i would not say that my father was a cruel man no he was not a cruel man he was actually a good man he is the one who instilled the values in me like do not lie do not steal do not get things from others or you know many such values that i have today are from my father but one thing that would change him is this 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 poison that would get into his heart is his body every time he would drink he would change and that was the only pain that i had in my life so as a child i'm seeing this violence in my own house and this made me very 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 shy angry upset negative fearful every day the fear in my heart is whether my father will come back home or not and if my father comes back whether he's he's going to let my mother live or not so i grew up with this fear and the shame that if others get to know this oh my god this was the thought in my heart each and every day so i grew up with no friends i was you know there were so many desires in my heart I, and i knew that i i can do so many things but no confidence because this one thought that my 
home is not safe my home is different from others my people are different from others would pull me back from entering the, those things when others would go out with their family to celebrate i would sit at the window and look at them going out waiting for my father to come hoping that maybe today we will go out this was the kind of childhood that i had and so were my brothers fearful nights and days i've not gone out to play with others my you know i i would just sit at home and in that little house with two bedrooms and that small garden that we had i have not gone out to play with kids and sitting there i will have my own imaginations i would dream of dolls and princesses and all kind of things but those were only dreams and those were the only things that would make me happy i didn't have many things to rejoice on on top of that i was as you know i had asthma i could not breathe properly i remember so many times when my father would rush me to the hospital at midnight with oxygen tubes going into my nose and you know really extreme worse physical condition as well so emotionally physically mentally you name it i was empty everywhere even though my father had finances it was mostly spent on alcohol i didn't wear dresses like others yes of course i had whatever i had was good but not many dresses not many things to show off like other kids would have so jealousy was another prime element in my life that why 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 my life is like this why not others why my life is like this why am i going through this this was my life my dears i hated myself i hated my parents i hated my teachers i hated my teachers because when i would go through all these things and when i go to class i would not be able to concentrate on my studies as well but till the time my mom taught me i remember you know till standard 5 second or third or first second third i would not go beyond that but the school was also small but uh in, from my sixth standard i was exposed to a new new environment altogether i would have to travel almost an hour physical condition was bad and i am going to this new place where i was out of the comfort zone the only comfort zone that i had of my mom and few teachers and this was close to my house so i was thrown from that into another world where i saw children talking in english i've not spoken in english before that where i see people moving around and doing so many things but i could not do any of it and that's when on top of that i got victim become a became a victim of bullying also i had this family friend of mine who would bully me around an elder friend now he's a very good friend of mine but that period was like a nightmare for me when say for example he would say he would tell my uh, you know i think i shared it with you some time back he would ch- tell the other kids around don't talk to raji if you talk i will beat you don't share anything with her so these kind of things and he would make fun of me anywhere and everywhere so on top of what i was going through at home when i go to school this is what i see my confidence was a big zero i could not understand physics chemistry i could not understand maths it will not get into my mind because i never knew how to study i never had that kind of support that would help me with it so on top of that my education was also down and you know another thing that takes a toll on me was i lost my father at the age of 13 so apart from all this comes the biggest stroke that breaks us down we lose that safety of a man in the house also at least this far 
we you know we had all these challenges but the society would treat us okay because there was a man in the house but the moment we lost our father all those people who would still come to us stopped coming to us if i would stand with another friend and a and a neighbor comes she will talk to that friend of mine but she will ignore me as a table or chair because i am not standing at par with those people anymore my mom got my father's job but it was not at the position where my father was or she was not there where my father was so all of it my relatives we thought they would care for us but the moment they realized that we are of no use because my mom is not able to earn like my father or do things like my father they also parted so here we were with my mom and my two younger brothers and myself toiling through this not the best of food not the best of things and i would say that you know the verse that say the verse uh, it says that even before you were conceived in your mother's womb he saw you god saw you that is so true my dears when i look back i know that through all this those two beautiful eyes were weaving my life story that i'm going to share further at the age of 12 i got a bible an old english bible which was difficult for me to read also that was that was difficult english for me but still i will read it once in a while even if it didn't make sense but i knew that there is something there in that book which would give me comfort maybe one word here one word there but dot on time it will be a blessing to me and here i do my 10th and 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 beautifully how yeshua provided is what i want to say is because you know as i journey through it things were tough but all my needs were met from then on ever since i got that bible i see that even during the difficult situations i was taken care of when i was in the 9th standard i was that is when 8th or 9th my fa- i lost my father i was really pathetic in my studies because i could not concentrate i could not go to tuitions i could not do any of it and my school was doubtful whether this girl will be promoted or this girl would even be able to get uh, you know get past the 10th standard but the beauty of it is that yeshua knew me and he saw me and he knew the need for me to move on in my life i didn't have finances to finish the school education when i look back that small fees was also so difficult for me but i would say the school was very kind to me i i i believe that uh, um uh, my principal um mr rajan vargis is listening to me Uh, of uh, our principal of kairi school ranchi is listening to me as i'm sharing my testimony sir i would like to say thank you so much for being kind to me and the malayali association who helped me finish my schooling and i am so i i, I can definitely say that today as you stand as you see me standing here and telling all this you would also see how mighty a god we serve you might be seeing that you know so many friends from school and college came back saying you were such a silly girl and how beautifully holy spirit led you and you are standing here and you're preaching his gospel you're preaching his word and you're encouraging many i can say that that broken vessel that i was the broken vessel that that was thrown out of the house the maker got me inside the house and he filled me with water and he touched me and it it changed to the choicest wine i'm not saying that i am the best but i'm saying that the broken life that i had if he can change my life he can change yours my dear would you just turn back and see your life would you just turn back and see hasn't he been so good to you
even through the difficult times didn't you experience an angelic presence didn't you see a few hands unknown hands coming to help you i tell you that is yeshua's hand over your life hasn't people come been, been coming and telling you about yeshua how uh, have do you have people around you who are praying for you or who are just coming and saying that my dear don't worry i will pray for you if you are hearing that i want to tell you that it is nobody else but it is yeshua who is there who is doing it coming back to my testimony the 10th standard where i could have just flunked his beautiful hands came and i see you know my my best friend was shocked is that you raji is that you is that your marks i know it was not me it was him i finished my 10th my 12th i don't know who did it other than god because i was not the best of the students i didn't have the best of the tuitions or anything but if you know i remember my 12th standard exam i went in to give the board exam i everybody was writing 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 3 hours you get to finish the paper one and half hours i was done because i knew only that much but i tell you i come back my results come i get first division in that also first division is not a big thing for those who are you know for for those who really study hard and who are you know doing a lot of things to get there in not first division you know 90 99% is what is the expectation but for me passing was the most difficult thing because now when i look back my mind was not that capable to do it now when i look back i'm like oh if i knew this way of studying i would have excelled i didn't have that kind of a wisdom there and if i could finish my studies it was only because this these hands which i was not aware of were on me and he saw my future he saw me standing here and testifying years ago and that's why he helped me finish it finishing my 12th i had no idea what to do next i wanted to go and i i did my 12th uh, i took science biology and i wanted to go for mbbs but i didn't have 1000 rupees to fill the form when my friends would give so many exams they you know multiple entrances they went for but for me getting those 1000 rupees for one entrance was difficult i just chucked that idea i wanted to go for fashion technology forget about it it's a, it was a dream and i was like what next i don't know and when i was sat there in that mood i uh, in that phase i just said that let me go back to my father's place and i want to go i, I want to go back to kerala and i want to study i was in uh, in the north and i wanted to go back and study in kerala when i told this to my grandmother she said don't come to kerala you will be a burden to your uncles that really hurt me is that my grandmother is that my mother's mother who is saying that that to me because i don't have a father isn't there anybody to take care of me is there anybody to help us you know i was never aware of this verse in the bible which says that he is the father of the fatherless and the defender of the widows i never knew bible then i never knew that there is a provision for fatherless and the and the widows for uh, for in the, in the bible but my heart was crying out to that one god the universal god whom i was not aware of and here crying out to him i said you help me wherever you are whatever you are i don't know you but if you love me help me through this beautifully uh you know i come down to kerala and i thought that it was my plan to come to kerala for my studies but when i look back it was not my plan it was yeshua himself who was waiting for me here he was waiting to meet me just like you know a girl grows up in her father's house and there is a time when her parents look for a match for them for her and they get that girl prepared 
as they grow they get her prepared to meet her life partner i would say exactly like that i was getting ready to meet my life partner i reach kerala with my best friend's elder sister and i was supposed to join another college in changna sheri where i was just thinking if i would get english nothing like it but you know it was difficult for me to get that also of course i got first division marks but that was not enough for me to get into a college like that and get into the subject that i would want but my friend and her father said let's just wait before you get into that college let's go to another college for me the idea of college was okay when i go to the college i will meet the man of my life who will change my life who will come on the horse and take me on his on the wings and give me a beautiful life and i was so looking forward to that kind of a union in my life <laughs> but that didn't happen there i come down to kerala and that night was difficult for me when my uh, you know friend and her father said that we have to go to another college which is a christian college and you have only nuns there and it's a girls college so it broke my heart it really broke my heart because all my dreams were shattered even before i could realize the next day i was in the college the interview was o- over and i opted for communicative english without even knowing what it is not i could not speak one sentence in english i was that scared to speak and that kind of you know within 2 hours everything was over and i was in the hostel wondering what am i doing here between all these sisters and these girls but i tell you my life partner was waiting for me my maker was waiting for me there i reached that hostel and wondering what to do every day i would sit and think what next what next what next and every evening i would see few girls you know entering the chapel and i would wonder what they do because i knew that only catholics get to enter that i always wanted to get the, get in there and see what's happening so i got into that place and one day i was so amazed to see that those girls were praying and they were praying aloud and they were praying and taking their request to god and they were talking aloud just like you know i'm talking to you they were talking like that and i'm like how can this be so but i could also experience yeshua's presence there i could experience something very different there something that i can't even explain till this day i can't explain what it was but my whole body was burning nobody came from the pulpit there was no pulpit only there that was just a chapel nobody there to you know preach nobody to do anything else we were just a bunch of say 10 15 girls sitting there and praying somebody would pray and the other would agree and and my whole body was burning i could i i i can't even explain the experience that i had and i knew that something touched me something changed within me a new hope was in me a new strength came into me not that my life changed immediately but going from then on when nobody is around i would go to the chapel i would just sit quiet when i'm happy i would go there when i'm sad i would go there and i took that old bible that i got in the school and with my understanding i would read that wherever i get a christian book i will just open and i'll read wherever whatever i w- i would read the verses on the wall i would do anything and everything to understand this and i, w- I became so eager to know what's there in it when there was a three day convention happening in the college i, I had no understanding that there are prayer meetings I was totally unaware of this kind of a world but I just knew that there is something very beautiful about Yeshua something very comforting and something that something that would tell me that don't worry I am there that kind of uh, of you know a protection of a father 
the embrace of a mother the comfort that i could not experience as a child or as as somebody growing up i could feel that and and when i'm saying this i am not talking out of anything that i've heard or seen but i'm talking and i'm telling you my life this is what i felt and there somebody said that if you want to have a relationship with god you need to forgive forgive anybody and everybody you hold grudges against and that's when i started praying and i forgave everybody i had anger with and knowingly or unknowingly i said yeshua come into my heart and save my life save my mother save my brothers save my family unknowingly i asked and he gave it to me unknowingly i give my life to him years went by two years in that college i had no understanding of what's happening but i knew that yeshua has touched me from that shy girl i i at least started talking to people and making friends and uh, nobody came preaching to me but here and there you know maybe while i'm traveling in the train i would meet i don't i, I never knew who are pastors i never knew who are you know who are evangelists i never knew anybody but i remember so many instances where on the train in the bus i would meet people who would tell me about yeshua those were small and big interventions in my life where he was preparing me to be his bride five years nobody else no pastors no fathers no sisters no mothers no preachers no evangelist no prophets five years raji had only conversations with yeshua alone i would go when you know immediately after finishing my graduation within 15 days i get a job there were many people who came for the interview they were all well dressed they were all speaking well but they selected only three people me i could not even clear one round i was, I was like so scared i i didn't have the confidence to clear even one round the first round the second round was you know gd where they would want me to speak i don't know they never called me for that they directly called me for the third round i knew that that job came to me not because of my capability because i was so scared to utter a single word in english and here i had to do technical calls i get the job and on the job there were in each and every time i had experiences my dears i get the job they had a they had test you know they they i was supposed to clear a test to be able to work but here i was among the 40 people uh, who were being trained everybody got across to the floor three people could not get into it one was me second was a drug addict and third was having some mental issues so think about the pain that i was going through so ashamed of myself after all that i'm going through here i am in a situation after one month of so good training i was like you know no confidence and out there but within one week they give me one more chance and they put me on the floor and it was a nightmare but there i started learning how to speak in english i started conversing with americans i see when i look back each and every step yeshua was training me he put me to situations where i was like burning i had no clue what am i doing where am i standing where am i heading to how will i face this i don't have anybody to help i don't have anybody to strengthen me i don't have anybody to encourage me except for a few friends who themselves were struggling when i look back beautifully 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 my maker was leading me every time i had a failure i will get into his presence even without knowing that i am doing something that was meant to do be done as a believer the only prayer i knew was my father in heaven hallowed be your name let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to test but deliver us from evil 
this was the only prayer that i knew but i would pray it even every day morning and evening i would say that not as a ritual but from the depth of my heart this was the only thing i knew but i knew that each and every step this beautiful father was holding me and making me walk training me to stand where i stand today my dears i am telling you 5 years i had nobody nobody at all to come and do this to me from that on on that job i started speaking in english that fear left me to a greater extent from one job to another each and every job i know that i didn't get it because of my excellency it was totally mere chances his grace from one position to another to another to another it's a long story i want to cut it short 5 years in new delhi so innocent in that crowd i was a i was a small town young girl unaware of the the bad world out there the dirty world out there there in that city i remember i was looking for another job and i was just walking you know after an interview i had the file and everything in my hand and i was just walking and i remember a man coming to me and saying excuse me i need to talk to you for a minute and he talks to me and he says are you going for an interview i said yes he said i also have few jobs to offer you and he told me that there are some really high positions where you would earn really well these are really big people and they they need personal secretaries for him uh, themselves i thought wow my life is going to change and he gave me his card his number not even card he gave me his number and said please call me when you're ready and i'll tell you where to come I reach home to my friends my you know my roommates and I tell them wow I got this opportunity you know they are promising they're saying 100% I will get this job and it's high paying job they literally scolded me they they scolded me and literally you know it was like a slap on my face because I was so innocent this man was get to, trying to get me into trafficking I had no understanding of anything that that innocent i was yeshua protected me there if not for those friends i would have been lost so many such experiences i would work with people who would smoke drink and were into addiction but even when they would smoke my friends they were girls ladies going through such difficult lives divorced worried depressed and the only solution that they have is to smoke and to drink and live you know just end their lives like that and they were my close friends and when i would you know in the smoking zone i would sit with them but i would not smoke even if i want to even if i uttered that kind of a word i would just say oh what is this i also want to taste they would not give that to me because yeshua was protecting me I tell you if not for him my life would have come to an end my dears if not for him i would have been dead long back those 5 years i had nobody 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 but these interventions here and there and now i see that the angels of yeshua were protecting me day in and out 5 years from then I left the job at Delhi and I I came down to Bangalore hoping that I want a different kind of a life out there in Delhi the life was very good you know there were friends party all of it but I see when all of these people go back home they were depressed and shattered even worse situation that I was in coming back to Bangalore I said I want people who love God I want people who pray but I had no understanding that Christians are like that I had no understanding of that And as I was praying I know that it was an intervention from him, from Yeshua himself I was traveling in the cab to office and there was Pauline a very close friend of mine now and she was much elder to me I was maybe 23 24 and she said I I asked her do you know of old age homes because I had Saturdays and Sundays free 
let me go there and do something good and she said yes she told me all that but she also invited me to the church and i felt really nice about it that sunday however i thought let me go next sunday but this kind lady she came and she waited outside in a rented auto for me for half an hour i rushed to this with her to the church and i tell you that was the turning point in my life when i enter this place this auditorium there were a bunch of girls and guys standing there and praising god and singing when the oceans rise and thunders roar i will sow with you about the clouds father you are king over flood i will be still and know that you are god i will be still and know that you are god i tell you that song touch me to and just just went deep down in my heart and that changed my life from that life's first breath i saw each and every thing that hurt me that pierced me that pinched me every shame every fear everything that got me shattered i saw all of it and a wave of love a wave of love that washed the pain away i would say he washed the pain away my dears the things that i was ashamed of the failures the loneliness the rejection the mocking the calling the tricks and the traps all of it he showed me and he said through all this i was with you and i am still with you and i'm not done with you i have come to give you a life in an abundant life i don't have plans to harm you but to prosper you this was his promise my life started changing step by step 7 months down the line i understood what was happening all throughout this life every sunday i would go there i never knew that i have to go to the pastor and ask him to pray for me i would just go and pray i would just go and pray i would not go to the front i would just stand there and I'd worship you know i had no no understanding that when you worship people raise their hands i had no understanding I, it was something from within they would just you know when i would say praise him automatically my hands would rise i would not care about anybody around but the love that i got the the the, the embrace that i got the peace that filled my heart the strength that came into me the thought that somebody cares for me that the truth that set me free that yeshua died for me and my sins and my failures and my pain and everything everything that put me down he is nailed to the cross he is nailed to the cross that truth set me free and seven months down the line i decide i need to get baptized i had no understanding what baptism is except for the fact that i knew that when people get baptized they decide to follow yeshua when a friend on this earth has done so many good things for me how can i not thank the you know him who saved me from everything you know i can go and talk about my friends who helped me anywhere then why can't i talk about this good god who saved me from the pit of hell but i've been i would have been destroyed forever how would i not praise him how would how would i not glorify him how would i not share about him such a good god my dear friends i'm telling you from the depth of my heart there was no man there was no woman that there was no one person who forced me to accept yeshua as my savior i see the hand of yeshua himself leading me through all of it many a times you know not that my life changed or i became rich or i i married the richest person or no i got married much later i got into all this much later but there are so many more so many miracles that i can talk about so many blessings that pour, that he poured into my life but it was not at one time 
I didn't come to him because I wanted a healing in my body. I didn't come to him because I was under great debt. I didn't come to him because I wanted something on this earth. But I came to him. I would not say I came to him. He came to me. He loved me. He embraced me. He got me into his presence. And he told me that you are special to me. You are unique. You are mine. When nobody wants you, you are mine. He changed my life. No man, no woman, nobody. It was him, him alone. My dear friends who are listening to me and who had this question in your heart. Did she get money that she changed? Did she have some force, people who forced her into it? No, 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 10,000 times. It was he himself who touched me. And if I stand today, it is only his grace. I met so many accidents, so many moments when my life would have come to an end. Really critical stages in my life but if I stand today and testify it is him if I have children today it is him if I am known today it is him it is him alone this is my story and I believe that my life story is going to touch you don't doubt don't doubt why are you trying to fight with him why are you trying to prove that there is no God? Why are you trying to prove that the story, the Bible is a lie or it is a man who has created it? No, my dears, taste for once. Ask him for once. Ask. Ask him once in your heart. Tell him, ask him, would he just come into my life? Would he show me that if you're true? If you are living, I am talking to the Christians, many Christians who doubt whether this is a story. They are Christians because their father or mother are Christians. But you are not Christian in your heart. You are not following Christ in your heart because you have never known him. You have never asked him. You are trying hard to prove that there is nothing like that. There is no God. Today, I want to ask you, I want to urge you, I want to request you. Ask him once to come and show himself and you will know that he is for real. Yeshua is for real. Holy Spirit is for real. The Father in heaven is for real. I am not talking out of what I have heard or seen or people have taught me. No, I am sharing my life with you. I am just sharing a portion of it. But till this day, this very day, this very moment, I see his hand. I just want to close here. There are many, many, many. I can just go on and on and on. But I want to close here. And I want you to know that he is for real. Test him. Ask him. Ask him. He will come to your house, your room, into your heart today. I just want to say a word of prayer for you. Whoever is doubting today, he'll touch your heart. He will touch your soul. That burning sensation in your heart, the pain, the shame, or the struggle that you are in, trying to make yourself happy. A friend asked me, are you really happy, Raji? Did you turn to this because you are having issues? To my friend, I want to say that I didn't turn to this because I had issues or I was upset or I was sad. I turned to this because I tasted him and I knew I, I know him for real let me just pray I'll say a word of prayer for you Father in the name of Yeshua I come to your feet there is nothing that I can boast there is nothing that I can claim you showed me yourself and all my friends all my colleagues all the people who doubt why Raji Gopinath turn to you would you just answer them would you just answer their hearts cry would you just step into their lives oh master whatever situation they are in Lord, wherever they are trying to answer or try to find an answer oh master would you just step in 
and would you just change their lives for your glory your master answer them answer them yeshua answer them answer them in your love answer them in your care of father embrace them strengthen them wrap them in your love let them know who you are oh father i just surrender everything unto your hands let your name be glorified in yeshua's name i pray amen 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 yeshua bless you keep you i don't know how much you've understood but if anybody wants to know more about it you can write to me you can write to me and i would definitely get back to you you can my facebook id is raji shiju you can look for me and you can inbox me your messages i would look into it and i would definitely answer you further yeshua's blessings to you see you